It is now 7 o'clock p.m. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, present are, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Bob, I keep wanting to call you Robert, but Bob Ferguson, Patrick Shrine, Steve Babineau, and, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Tracy Hunter. And uh, welcome the town staff and the esteemed citizens who we are all here to serve. Uh, with that, I'd like to say we have a quorum, so the meeting will start. First, I'd, uh, I'd ask, does it look like there's anyone, but there, are there any citizens who I can't see who want to make a presentation? Good, because I can't hear you either. Staff, any announcements and reports? Good evening, board members. Thank you for your time today. <clears throat> Good to see you. Uh, just a couple of announcements on the park side, and then Sumner will uh, finish it with the uh, uh, recreation updates. Over at Harmony Park, uh, we're still we started our soccer um, league this 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 year, and we're excited to start a new sponsorship program. If you remember, recall, I had given you that update uh, several uh, meetings back. So I'm working closely with the organization um, to get that momentum going and get some sponsorship going. And the reason behind that is to um, work together uh, collaboratively to um, come up with some capital improvement projects for the park itself. So we're looking forward to that and very excited to news. And that's gonna be similar to what uh, TCRYBA does over at Independence Park, uh, East and West for the Baseball Association. Um, over at Independence Park uh, West, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have some construction going on at the moment, and uh, we're excited to announce the uh, existing playgrounds being replaced with an ADA-compliant playground. So that project's gonna uh, be completed within three to four weeks, barring any inclement weather. <laughs> um, one of the excited um, um, features about this project that it's we're going to get rid of all the wood chips and it'll have a rubber surface similar to what we have over at Harmony Park. So um, we're really excited about that project. On the median side, I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's some green ash trees on Indian Creek. Just to give you a brief update on that is uh, the tops are bare still and the bottoms do have some new foliage coming in. And the reason for that was they took a pretty nasty hit in the 2021 uh, winter storm during February. Ever since that, they've been struggling a little bit, but we are on top of it. Uh, we do. We did notice some new foliage coming in this year, so we don't want to cut those tops off quite yet and limit their food source, right, and get that sun to penetrate into those those that foliage, right. So, um, we're going to give them another shot and fertilize them within the next four weeks as well, and hopefully uh, next year we'll we'll make a good determin determination on whether we uh, remove them or replace them. So. Um, on the flower beds, uh, we are going to be, well, staff is going to be removing the flowers, all the annual color from the winter. Um, our goal is to install the summer color before Mother's Day, May 8th. So uh, please look out for that. We'll definitely be doing some new mulch and new plant material as well. And what we're trying to do a little bit different this year is um, install some more perennials and, and get rid of uh, just have less summer color to 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 reduce on cost and watering as well. So uh, we're going to give that a try this 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 year. Um, Fox Point. I wanted to give you a quick update on that. Is that's a that's a neighborhood in in Skyline that the town owns. Uh, we're going to be replacing some dead trees there and, and trimming some overgrown shrubs as well. And uh, we have two walls that do uh, that are installed there as well. Uh, we're going to look for some estimates on painting that wall as well, kind of sprucing things up a little bit on that side of the town. Um, and then lastly, I want to introduce you to Mr. Kyle Berry from Troop 328B. Um, Kyle, spend, uh, and, and I'll let him, I'm not going to steal his thunder, I, I'm going to let him uh, explain all this to, to you guys, but I need to brag about him just a little bit. He, he spent a lot of hours at Trophy Club Park. We used to have a geocache uh, system in Trophy Club Park years ago and with the floods that uh, we've experienced a lot of those geocache containers just disappeared. Uh, Ty, or Kyle took it upon himself to come up with this project. Uh, he reached out a couple years ago so you can add up the, you know there's a lot of hours invested in there from him 
and he replaced a lot of those geocache containers. So um, I'm very, very proud of him. I can't be more thankful for him to do that and taking that upon himself. I'll let him uh, do some more bragging and, uh, and, and uh, that concludes my portion of the parks uh, um, update. If you have any questions, please let me know. No questions, okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Good evening. A couple years ago, um, in about 2019, I received permission from Mr. Carroll to indeed do this project. Um, this project was basically to replace the geocaches that needed to be replaced at Shrift Club Park, as I did notice a couple years back that when I went to go geocaching with my family, most of them were gone. <laughs> so. I went to my scoutmaster, asked him permission, he said it was okay, and then went to Mr. Carroll, and then eventually Mr. Athens, who is not here anymore, so I have Mr. Harmio here to represent me. Um, I did survey all of the uh, geocaches at Trove Club Park. Most of them came back as okay condition and did not need to be replaced, and one was taken upon the owner himself to replace, so I didn't touch that one either. Um, the ones I did replace were the ones placed by Trophy Club Park, which will be on the next one. Geocaching, um, anyone here not geocached before? All right, so geocaching is a fun act outdoor activity. It's essentially a mass or a giant scavenger hunt that anyone could be a part of. Um, one of the easiest ways to access it is go on geocaching.com, which is a which is the number one geocaching site out there, and um, you can find a bunch of geocaches in your area or ones you want to find, like the ones I placed. You use a GPS um, along with the coordinates supplied by the website to go find the geocaches, and it's overall a really fun um, activity. And I thought it would need to be re um, brought back to. Trophy Club Park. This is how to geocache. And this is the, essentially the geocaches I placed out there. When I went in for my meeting with Mr. Carroll, um, I brought up the issue about flooding to him and how the boxes will just get carried away in the storm. So I proposed an um, anchor system to him, which he was okay with. Um, I. Uh, chain them to the anchor to make sure that they won't flow away once again. Uh, I placed a log and toys um, along in there to give them something to do once they find it. Um, I He also in the meeting he asked me to paint the geocaches a uh, bright or a brighter color than the uh, traditional green so that they don't mistake in it for something else. Also tag geocache. <laughs> yeah, well. And once I placed them out there, I immediately got feedback. Um, this one's one of the ones I replaced from, that was it, placed by the city. It was the women's garden. It was close to the, it was basically inside the women's garden. That is the red barn. And if you could see, there's the pavilion in the right hand picture. Um, this is one of the ones I placed myself. It's on the southern side. All of them, or most of them that I've placed that are new are on the southern trails. Um, I just thought that since it's a trail, it would be a, a lot more better to place them along the trail so that way when people go hiking, they could do multiple while they are on their trek. Um, all the ones that I have placed have the the, um, the exact style of this one, and along with the ones I did replace. The this is an example of one of the ones I did not touch, but I did survey. It is Cash Creek. It is along the same trail, as I said before. And this one, um, I contact the owner, but she uh, they said as long as it's fine, I don't need to touch it. But that's not, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Yes.
that's what I've been doing when I've been golfing. I've been actually planting geocache seeds <laughs> in the woods. Interesting. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We do appreciate it, Kyle. I think a lot of folks are going to be able to uh, enjoy that. So uh, we do have one normal agenda items. Uh, we need to approve the minutes. Now, I have a quick question here, Tony and Deborah. I noticed in our pack there are minutes from two meetings, November and March. Yes, the reason the reason for that is we did not include those minutes at our last meeting, so we are doing it today, um, hoping that you guys can approve those. The board. Did anybody find any errors and omissions in said minutes? That then I'll entertain a, a motion to accept the minutes, approve them. Second. Second. And a motion to second. Mm -hmm. I guess the uh, meetings are approved unanimously. Well, first of all, if I, anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? Mm -hmm. Meetings, the minutes from both meetings are approved unanimously. Next agenda item. Tom, if I may, uh, Sumner still has to give his recreation announcement. If we can oh, touch I, on that. Well, I got all the announcements. Let's see, okay. I'll be I'm brief. new at this. I'll be brief. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, we'd like to share some uh, updates from the recreation side of the town. Um, first, I'll start off with Trophy Club Park. On April 2nd, we had a volunteer uh, day hosted by NISD. Uh, we were blessed with over 100 volunteers. Um, they came out to accomplish some, some pretty great things out there. First thing they did is they gathered all the trash and debris from our hiking trails near our motocross tracks and trails and also our disc golf course. Um, and then we painted some pipe rail fencing. We had over 2,600 feet of pipe rail fencing painted by those students. They scraped the fences and then uh, painted over them. So it's a half mile. Yeah, very far. So the entire uh, disc golf area and then the pavilions near the boat ramp um, all have fresh paint on them. So it looks very, very nice. A, a quick question. Do we see a lot of debris? Is there any what you'd consider excess given the nature of the activity and of course the winds and trophy club. <laughs> are, are the users taking care of the property as they should? For, for the most part, I would say that there's just a natural amount of trash. There's going to be litters that aren't gonna pick up after themselves. With the disc golf uh, course specifically, there's several trash cans almost by uh, nearly every tee box, but you'll still have people that are wanting to just drop their things. Um, there's also just some more wooded areas that are catching things, like maybe a grocery bag that could have caught wind from somebody's truck bed and blew over there. So, but for the most part, we're pretty pleased with how clean the, the park stays from okay. debris and trash. Yeah, okay. Uh, starting tomorrow until Wednesday, we're actually getting our main road repaired. Um, so the whole park will be closed down. Um, anything to the north part of uh, Trophy Club Park will be closed uh, to all vehicle entry and um, pedestrians as we have crews working out there, making sure that road's taken care of um, and to have no traffic on it as it's setting in place. So we're very excited to get that started. Um, moving on to our events, we had our extravaganza on Saturday. Um, 15,000 eggs were uh, packed and placed out on our t-ball fields and they were gone in a matter of minutes. Um, it was a very, very successful event. Uh, 1,500 to 2,000 participants. Um, everybody had a great time uh, gathering eggs, uh, taking pictures with the Easter Bunny. Uh, we're very thrilled with uh, another successful event there. Um, I want to say a thank you to Barra Church and uh, TCR PVA for volunteering their time. Bar Church came out and uh, volunteered to uh, assist us with the Easter Bunny um, and lay out eggs in the area. And uh, TCR PVA kind of helped with some crowd control as we made sure those uh, areas stayed cleared until it was time. So very thankful for them to come out. So uh, Taste of Trophy Club is at the end of this month. It'll be from 6 to 10 p.m. We're very excited to share. We've got all of our, our big key items secured, our live entertainment. Stephanie Sally will have yard games, um, kids entertainment with inflatables, face painters, balloon artists. Uh, we currently have 10 food vendors secured for the event, so we're very excited to get underway with that. Um, coming up in May, our next event is our Memorial Day ceremony. That'll be on Monday. Uh, May 30th, so stay tuned for further updates on that. 
And then for our recreation programming, all of our programs are available uh, to residents and non-residents. Um, as of April 8th, that's when non-resident registration opened. So for swim lessons, um, any other activities we have. Our summer adventure camp is at complete capacity. Uh, you can still uh, sign up for the waiting list and as cancellations come in, we'll, we'll call those people that are next on that list. And then last but not least, we're uh, continuing our hiring efforts for seasonal staff, um, specifically in the pool. We've got some trickling in, but a couple more hands and we'll be ready to go for the summer. So that's it for my updates. Do you guys have any questions? The only question I might have, the, uh, the Taste of Trophy Club is new. Uh, what things are we doing to build awareness and or promote it? Because I know we've got vendors who are coming in. They're going to make an investment mm -hmm. to come here. Just want to, is there anything that uh, needs to be done? Or are you comfortable with the exposure it is getting? Yes. So our exposure is ramping up um, starting this week and next week. Uh, we have our sponsors that came in finalized, and our, our sponsors have social media as a part of their uh, package deal with us. So as we're promoting the event, we have scheduled posts that are going to be pushing out for them. So you'll see a lot more regular posts from the Town of Trophy Club Facebook page, um, as well as ours. We also have information on our marquees um, throughout town, and we'll be putting up some um, the large temporary signage uh, that's used by our streets department. Um, up in various locations to share about the time and date uh, when it comes to the week of taste. Sounds terrific. So uh, how much of the road at, at the park is getting done? I'm not sure how far into the entrance it is. It's it's basically the near the entrance of the park where all the potholes start, yep. you know, yep. where they begin. Um, I believe it's approximately about, oh, just a little under 2,000 feet. Okay. Of that, main yeah, that'd road. be the majority. That'd of be the, the whole uh, majority of that stuff, section yeah. where you can't really dodge any potholes out there. So, awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? No. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, and I was also going to tell y'all like this. This guy competes in strongman competitions. <laughs> So if anybody needs a security so guard, pay, don't pay oh. <laughs> no, 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 Isn't he a nice guy? <laughs> there was not one egg picked up uh, at Extravaganza because of Sumner. So before <laughs> the before the air horn went off, so we're, we're, we're really proud of that. Uh, some of the some of those kids get real aggressive going after the eggs. All right, and uh, let's just check here. With that, uh, I think we're ready for the uh, the main event of the evening. And that's uh, discussed, provide staff input regarding the placement of existing batting cages at Independence Park West. Tony. Yes, thank you again. Good evening again. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Um, very excited to present this to you tonight. Uh, we, these, these batting cages are, are located at Independence Park West. They were installed in 2016. Uh, and throughout those years, you know, we collaborative, collaboratively uh, maintained them with the Baseball Association. Um, but uh, as you can see, uh, these are recent pictures. Uh, they are in disrepair. Uh, the, uh, the lights are, are outdated. All the nets are sagging. And then, of course, you've got the, the poles that were installed that are loose and whatnot. I took it out of commission last month due to the disrepair and just for safety reasons for the kiddos. Um, so right now at this moment, they do not have a batting cage uh, available to them or any of the players do. So really excited about uh, having the opportunity to replace these, these batting cages. Uh, through their sponsorship, uh, the signage sponsorship program that TCRYBA is a part of, we are going to split the cost with them. The town is to replace them uh, um, Hopefully within the next month or two, I will provide council with an update after this meeting, which is April 26, um, with a final uh, approval from them. Um, currently, we have approximately just a little over $350,000 available in our parkland dedication funds that we can utilize for um, this project. And as you can see in your packets under our staff report there, uh, we did go out for bid uh, with three Received, we did receive three three bids from a contractor to uh, replace the batting cages themselves, and then we, we also requested for three bids to uh, replace the the um, lights, the light fixtures. I'll give you a second to to look for that if you don't mind. 
It should be towards the end of your packets. Presentation <clears throat> packet? Yes. There they are. The one that says batting cages in Defense Park? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do these ge generate revenue? They, they do not. They're, they're for, the, uh, for the players to be out there to, to warm up while they're uh, waiting on their uh, games or their tournaments um, and whatnot. So they're, they're for, for their practice um, as well. So you, I guess my other question would be, are, are, they, are there people there making sure no one gets hurt, the liability side of it? How is that being handled? As far as using them and not getting hurt? Well, I just... Liability if someone gets hurt using those, what's do we? Sure. So we, we carry insurance, right, where they, they would be covered through the town or they would also be covered through their through the TCR YBA organization as well. It's uh, similar to them being out in the field playing a baseball game and getting hurt. It would be no different from that. Tony, do you know what the difference is between Playground Solutions 43K, mm -hmm. Precision Services 80K, that's a huge difference. I'm, sure. I'm just wondering, what is that difference? They all these contractors were given the same specs, so it, it's it was easy for me to to uh, compare apples to apples. Right. Um, I, I I can't I can't really answer for them. I don't know why. I don't know if it's material. I don't know if it's their where they get their own material. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I can find out if you like and call them. But. Um, apples to apples their line items you're saying the materials cost more for precision as compared to playground solutions possibly it all depends on where they they obtain their their materials so I don't know where is it that precision precision purchases their materials I don't know if they maybe they uh, pay their labor a little bit more than what um, playground solution does mm -hmm. there's a lot of variables there that I, I, I wouldn't know at the moment mm -hmm. yeah I'd be curious to see what that difference sure. is. Sure, absolutely. So Sorry. do we get a lot of theft of baseballs from there? I mean, are they secure in the... I'm sorry, say that one more time. Do we do we lose a lot of baseballs from people just taking them, you know, after they're done? Or I'm, No. Or I've never been out there, so... Sure, I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm no, no. So, so let me explain a little bit how this works. It's a first-come, first-served basis, pretty much, right? Um, especially on weekends, is a very popular um, uh, location for them to practice uh, without having to lose their balls on the field or outside the fence or whatnot. They do, they'll grab, even for pitchers, right? It's not only for, for, for uh, regular batting practice. So if you can see the, the reason why we brought this up and, and the reason why we took out a commission, you see the sagging along the top portion of the, of the pole there? Well, that's not supposed to be there, so that's not safe, right? So. Um, there is some specs that do go with these with this uh, design in order for for it to be safe for the players to be out there and and have better control of, of their safety from our end as well so as you can also notice the the synthetic turf well that was donated from years ago from a football field as you can see the, the markings on the on that so the yard lines right so um, it, it, it just needs to be replaced. It's been, it's, it's, it's done its time. It's done its duty, and so it's, it's, it's about time for it to be. Uh, and, and don't discount the, uh, uh, the safety aspect there too. Correct. Um, about 12, 15 years ago, Grapevine High School batting cages, a little decrepit, same kind of condition. Yep. There was uh, an opening in one of them, and kids who are very capable, high school team players. Uh, one kid took a hit. Uh, went through the net, caught another kid in the temple, killed him. Yep. So I was I was president of the Northwest um, the Athletic Booster Club. First thing I was yeah, and, I said, and we, um, we we donated, you know, Dave, um, in in memory to him. I in one of the games, I, it yeah. was that was sad. <clears throat> that that was very sad. So safety is a big issue. Yeah. So, so Tony. Uh, yeah. the, this would be a complete tear down and redo then, re total rebuild? Sure. The only thing that we're salvaging is the concrete slab. Everything else okay. will be the same. And that's just to save some uh, on budget uh, a little bit. The concrete slab is in perfect conditions. The contractors were out and they were able to inspect it so that they can rebuild off of the, the slab itself. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. I, I'll go I was right just going to say, you. I was just going to ask too, is, is there anything, um, is this just normal? 
lifetime of batting cage wear and tear, or is there something specific that put a beating on it that we're needing to? I don't. I, I, I think that the amount of usage definitely plays a big role of it. We have tournaments coming in now as well. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to suggest here towards the end of the meeting is fut having uh, future agenda items at the end of each meeting, or at least an idea, or maybe I can get some more direction from the board on what to look into, and then bring you updates on those agenda items. And the reason I bring that up is one of the, um, to, to reduce on the wear and tear, um, we should look into possibili the possibility of installing more over at uh, East. We're getting a lot of uh, revenue throughout our tournaments. It may justify, you know, having another set of uh, batting cages on that side of the world as well, as opposed to not have the kiddos, you know, having to cross back and forth between practices or games or right at before their games to uh, get warmed up here and then cross the street, right? So um, we have a seven uh, baseball field complex and one set of batting cages. I think we we, we should look into probably putting a little bit more over on the opposite side. Thank you. Tony, Go ahead. I'm, I'm curious, sure. did, did each of the contractors um, provide examples of other batting cages they have installed, you know, meaning pictures for, you know, like how we did sure. with the, the playgrounds, you know, we were able to, you know, get an idea, feel. Right. Right. Right after it gets approved um, tonight, I'm going to call on references. I can ask for pictures. Um, I know that Playground Solutions, we've been working with them for many, many years, so they have a good reference starting with me mm -hmm. uh, and my team. So um, America's Nationwide Netting, the $53,000 bid, mm -hmm. they installed the netting uh, at Independence East, all the, 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 the backstop netting there, so they did a great job. Unfortunately, they just came a little bit higher than than the than the, the playground solutions, and then precision services, same thing. I, you know, I don't. I, I would call uh, some references to to make sure that we're getting a good deal and a good uh, good product, good quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those. Given it's a great American sport, there's a lot of activity at those batting cages. Tony, mm -hmm. I, absolutely. My son got instruction there. Their instructors that came yeah. in and. Both, both pitching and, and batting. And, uh, to your point, those, see all that netting that you hit that with, you know, the Texas 40, That's what 60 I mile an hour winds, mm -hmm. pound down on it with UV light for, oh, what, yeah. 12 years, it's it's going to have an effect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, good. Anything else, Tony? Uh, no, sir. That would be all. That's If I don't have any more questions, I, that, that any concludes Any further mind. questions from the board members on this topic? Just make it safe. It's yes, that's my only Absolutely. Yeah. Having a son that played for many years. Especially with the metal bats. Yeah, I'm going through the, the, the grapevine player. You know, safety is. Right. So you need board approval on this one. Please. Uh, entertain a motion I'll to accept. Enter I'll entertain one. There's okay. And accept. I accept. Motion is for any dissents. Motion's approved unanimously. Thank you. All right. Are there any other agenda items? I don't think we had anything else. We don't. We don't have any. You guys hear me okay with this? Yes. We don't have any at the moment. However, if you guys like the idea of looking into, not, not necessarily bringing back an item to take action on, but maybe an update on future batting cages for the opposite side of of uh, Independence Park, I can do that and be ready. Our, uh, our next meeting, um, our next meeting is not until... Our next meeting date, well, since we're looking ahead, we're targeting um, June 20th, August 15th, and October 17th. By what I'm seeing here, unless there's something unusual comes up, uh, we're going to be skipping November and December because of all the holiday festivities and activities and scheduled conflicts. Next year, the first meeting is targeted, boy, that's long range for my mind, uh, January 16th. Do you want me to repeat those dates, or are they in your packet? Well, you can repeat. They're, okay, I'll repeat them then. We're targeting June 20, 
August 15th, October 17th, Thanksgiving, Christmas, etc., and January 16th. Does anybody on the board or elsewhere have potential agenda items, things they might want covered in the next meeting? Meetings. An update on the batting cages would be terrific. Mm -hmm. So when you're supposed to start on the batting cages in the ideal world? Sure. Hopefully next month. Um, I'm taking this to council for final approval uh, April 26th, next Tuesday. And about how long is it going to take to? That I don't know yet. Um, when I initially talked to them, this was several months ago, and things have been changing almost daily. Um, so I'm hoping, I suspect or anticipate within a month. However, I want to make sure that we get the playground uh, project completed first, and then the the um, batting cages followed by, I don't know if I've updated uh, the board on this, is we're also going to resurface the basketball court at Independence West. So. Independence is going to be a little bit busy for the next several months, and they're all going to be improvements. Uh, agenda items I'd recommend would be updates on those three projects. Sure. sure. And then a fourth one, Tony, I know we did a radical thing in terms of uh, sure. uh, starting or attempting or Texas phrase fixing to was, um, allocate time for court instructors, pickleball, tennis, Okay. any update you might have on, on where we stand with all that and what we've learned from it. And okay, sure. Would be valuable. Any other agenda items? No. With that, it is now 7.32. I think our business here is done. The meeting is adjourned.